And your dad, it was four years ago, obviously you still yes. miss him every single day. But are you doing this, I know, I know it's for other people as well, but with him, sort of, do you feel as if you've got him right there? You know, Absolutely. You, yeah. you know, he's, he's with me every day. I miss mm. him so much every day. I can't explain it. Um, for us, it was a horrific thing to go through as a family, watching him live with motor neurone disease and eventually die from it as well. It is a heartbreaking disease for people to have. And, you know, I was so pleased to become a patron of the Motor Neurone Disease Association to try and do anything I can sure. to stop that happening to other, other families. You know, I passionately believe that a cure for this will be found in my lifetime, and that's what I want to plough my energies into doing. Mm. It, it's not as rare as people think. One in 300 people will get motor neurone yeah. disease, and it's heartbreaking. And, you know, that's why I want to make sure that people who do suffer from this disease have the dignity of life that's left to them and can live out their remaining time in the easiest way possible. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, some of them are facing huge difficulties, quite a lot of them, getting access to the money that they really need to to support their families. So right. that's what this campaign is all about. So it's kind of... Because they've actually said <laughs> that you have to be terminal in order to get this allowance. But then how, how do you come to terms with that? I mean, you can't, you can't say to someone, you, you can only get this money if you've only got six months to live, mm -hmm. because how do you know? Everybody's different. One size doesn't fit all. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, that's what they're trying to do. So at the moment, a doctor has to say that there's a reasonable expectation of you dying within six months for right. you to have this fast track process mm -hmm. for, your, um, for your benefits. Now, this is money that people are entitled to. Absolutely. It just means that they don't have to fill out lots of forms, have face-to-face -face assessments, go to job centres and things like that. And as you can imagine, for someone who's got a terminal illness, this is the last thing they want to be Absolutely. wasting their time of course, doing. Of course. The issue with a disease like motor neurone disease is that it's unpredictable. You never know what symptoms you're going to get mm. next. Uh, but the fact is, once you get that diagnosis for motor neurone disease, that's it. It is a death sentence. You're not going to survive from it. Mm. More than half of people die within two years. So we're just calling for people to be able to get swift access to the money yeah. they're due to. Let's not make them jump through hoops in order to get this money that's desperately needed to support them and their families. Honestly, it's a heartbreaking situation and I, I cannot believe I've heard stories from people who are going through this. They've lost the use of their legs, they've lost the use of their arms, they can barely speak and they're having to fill out form after form after form. Why are we doing this to people at the most vulnerable time in exactly. their lives? And when every moment is precious. You know, they, they, want, they want to spend the, the moments that they have, the hours, the days that they have, with their families mm -hmm. or, you know, doing things that are important to them and make them feel better, exactly. hopefully. We went through that with my dad and you want to treasure every single yes. moment doing those things that really matter. Yes. Not sitting there having to fill out endless forms or go to a job centre to try and persuade someone that they, they can't work. No, it doesn't make any sense. Because their body is giving up around them. It's, it's, it's such a cruel illness because, of course, your dad, he never met your wee girl, did he? No. Which is so sad. I know you were pregnant at the time. And I know. I remember it vividly. I remember thinking, oh, my, to, to have to go through all of that, it's just, it's just not fair. It was one it's of those the cruelest things. disease. He died a month before Ella Rose oh. was born. Um, you know, I've, I've got to be thankful for the fact that I was able to tell him yes. that I was pregnant at yes. last because it had taken us um, some time to get to that stage. And, you know, I, I kind of shared that journey with him, but sadly mm. he wasn't there to see her. But you've done a memory book for her, haven't you? You've done, so yeah. she, she'll know him. She knows yeah. all about Grandad Frank. When we go Great. on holiday, she waves to him out of the aeroplane window because she says Grandad Frank's in the sky. That's oh. where he lives. He's up in heaven. So she's very much aware That's of lovely. him. That's really she's lovely. She's got his picture right by her bed. So she says goodnight to him every night. And, I, you know, I, I like the fact that she, he is living on through her. It's that same of life so. type. Very thing, much so. It? You're right in that. That's exactly right. She's such a cute girl. I can't <laughs> believe that she's four. And I can't believe you go to bed at the same time. But I you know. kind of have to, don't you? I have you? the bedtime of a four-year-old. Uh, <laughs> social life of a toddler. <laughs> yeah, I know. It comes it's to it. true. I have to tell her to go to sleep so that I can get to sleep. Because let's face it, you know, we need our sleep to, to cope through things in the morning on Good Morning Britain. Indeed. You, you and Susanna have got a lot to put up with <laughs> with that Piers Morgan. But you, bit. you do your bit and you do do it very, very well. You Thank keep, you you keep him on his toes. Well, you keep him on his toes. We try. And I, I love what you do with Mark as well with the racing. And oh. You become a real style icon. You look fantastic. Run every every decision past Mark. So I'm thinking, well, as long <laughs> as I've got the Mark Hayes seal of approval for what I'm wearing. Oh, these outfits um, are beautiful. And I'm, I'm so lucky because imagine doing a job where you get to go to Royal Ascot and present there all week. You get to wear amazing outfits. You do. Amazing hats. You know, it's, it's, it's quite something. It's fantastic. And I really wish you all the best for this campaign. Thank you very it's much. It's common sense.
science is what it is. I hope just so. Have, you know, those in charge, just have a bit of humanity. Yeah, well, I like are to so think vulnerable. the tide is turning. There's an all-party parliamentary group for terminal illness. They, they've got this report coming out later today that's going to be happening in Parliament, and they're recommending that this six-month limit should be lifted. So I hope that yeah. they're listened to and we can see this change in the law. You keep on at it. I You're will a tenacious do. woman, and you will get there. Thanks Thank you, Sharon. Thank, Thank you so much.